Radon Smith will spend 27 years in jail for enabling child abuse that led to the death of her daughter, two-year-old Kelsey. A Creek County judge handed down that sentence yesterday. The jury back in July found her guilty and recommended that 27 years. Smith's attorney says he'll file a motion by mid-October asking for a new trial, calling the sentence a miscarriage of justice. Keely, earlier today, Judge Joe Vassar sentenced Radon Smith to 27 years in prison. It's the sentence which the jury recommended that she receive. Now, this case likely is not over yet, although it has brought about many changes so far to state law and to DHS. Tonight, a quick look back at some of the changes brought about by the loss of little Kelsey's life. They were the last words heard by Radon Smith following her trial. In July, a jury found her guilty of enabling the child abuse of her two-year-old daughter, Kelsey. It's a case that has brought a lot of attention to the issue of child abuse, and it's even brought about a few changes to the Department of Human Services. And child welfare laws and statutes change from year to year. This wasn't something that was just built overnight. Some of those changes giving DHS workers a stronger voice in court, something many believe could have saved Kelsey. Another change? It also includes that the director of the Department of Human Services can call under certain circumstances an OSBI investigation into child abuse and neglect. And make not only DHS, but judges and attorneys responsible for releasing information. What we do believe it's going to do is give more transparency to the cases. By showing the case from a different perspective in hopes of those on the outside gaining a greater understanding. Pyatt says Kelsey's death has brought about many good changes. Sadly, though, DHS is still seeing a large volume of abuse cases. I've talked to child welfare workers in the field who have told me that not only has the volume of cases increased, but the severity of the abuse has increased. The things that are happening to, this, to these children is, is getting worse. Now, as for Radon Smith, we spoke with her attorney, Stephen Jones, earlier today. He tells us this is just the end of one chapter and the beginning of another chapter. He says that they have until October 20th to appeal Radon's case, and he says they do plan on doing so. For Oklahoma News Tonight, Shelly Mills, KSBI-TV. All right, thank you, Shelly. And DHS says it's still too early to see if any of those changes Shelly told us about are making a difference. They say it will be several years before that data is available. Well, Radon Smith is back in court today. This time a judge officially sentences her to 27 years in prison. Um, but Fox 25's Britton Follett tells us before she left, Ray Dawn spoke four words that shocked the courtroom. The judge gave Kelsey Smith Briggs' mom a chance to speak. Inside a packed courtroom, Ray Dawn stood, turned toward Kelsey's family on dad's side, who laughed after Ray Dawn said, quote, Kathy, I forgive you. Ray Dawn, what do you forgive Kathy for? Four words to the woman who only saw her granddaughter once during the last four months of her life. Why is she not pointing the finger to Michael Porter right now? Why is she pointing it to me? Is it because she knows she did it? Four words that made no sense. <laughs> she still just does not get it. Ray Dawn blamed Kathy Briggs. Ray Dawn's family blamed the media and the district attorney. I think it's ridiculous. Uh, the media has cr uh, crucified my sister-in-law. It's everybody's fault but theirs. If you get in their way, they're going to blame you. Corrections officers asked the judge to stick with the jury's 27-year sentence because Radon refused to take any responsibility for her daughter's death, bypassing the blame to the only people who tried to protect Kelsey. I actually had a little sympathy going into this today, but when she stood up and made those comments, I'm, you know, take her away. Keep her. Let her think about what she's done. Radon's lawyer says he will ask for a new trial, saying the jury did not hear evidence that would clear Radon. My client did not kill her daughter. My client did not abuse her daughter. And my client did not sit by and knowingly let somebody else abuse her daughter. Her daughter's dead. Her daughter is dead. Being the mother of a dead child is not a felony in this state. One of the 12 people who convicted Radon says she deserved a life sentence. The only question now lays in my mind is, did she hit her or did she kick her? That's the only question I have left. The majority of us said if murder would have been there, she would have got it. The two people home that day, Michael Porter and now Ray Dawn, are in prison. But no one is convicted of murdering Kelsey Smith Briggs. Ray Dawn, who killed Kelsey? Radon killed Kelsey. I know she did. 
Radon's family and her lawyer called the conviction and sentence an injustice. Deputies took Radon Smith to Lexington Assessment and Reception Center this afternoon. We do not know if she will be held at a women's prison or, like Michael Porter, taken out of state for protection. Kelsey Smith Briggs. Her name is on a state law and a grave. Kelsey was murdered October 11th of 2005, but 100 miles across the state, another two-year-old's body has been in a grave for 10 years. In 1995, Ryan Luke's broken bones broke Oklahomans' hearts. It was so atrocious because we had pictures of this child in a body cast. A cast designed to heal a broken leg could not protect Ryan from the blow to the head that killed him. It struck people's sense of appropriateness at a level that I don't think had ever happened in Oklahoma. Two months before he was murdered, a judge sent Ryan to live with his grandfather, Don Luke, because social workers suspected Ryan's mom, Wendy, or her boyfriend, Larry Tannehill, beat the boy, breaking his leg. Tannehill and Wendy were alone with Ryan the day he died. Prosecutors tried Tannehill for Ryan's murder. He was found not guilty. A verdict and a case that began changing opinions on the Capitol floor. We could discuss for three days the length of quail season and whether to change it or move it one way or another, but a kid bill was dead on arrival. With opposition, Laura Boyd passed the Ryan Luke Law, designed to hold DHS, the state agency in charge of protecting children, accountable by releasing confidential DHS records when a child is murdered. It isn't just DHS, but the cloud of secrecy is there. We intended to expose a lot of that. A law that did not protect another two-year-old. The conditions were very much too familiar. They were too familiar. Kelsey Smith Briggs died of a blow to the stomach. But what she lived through became the most high-profile child abuse case in state history. You had an incredibly beautiful child. You had horrible, horrible injuries that were well documented. You had a, a, a grandmother that was obviously very motivated to, to see changes done. I made that promise to Kelsey. If anything happened to her, that I would never shut up, and I'm not going to. Despite bruises, a broken collarbone, and two broken legs, a judge ruled against DHS recommendations and sent Kelsey home with her mom, Ray Dawn Smith and her stepfather, Michael Porter. Three months later, she was beaten to death. If they can have all the facts like they had with Kelsey's case and she still died, what other kid has a chance? Not in Lincoln County. Lawmakers passed yet another law named after another dead child. You can't blame the lack of a law on the, for the death of Kelsey Briggs. You can blame the two people who are in prison for the de death of Kelsey Briggs. Porter and Ray Don are in prison for allowing Kelsey to be abused to death. I love my baby. No one is convicted of her murder. Ray Don, who killed Kelsey? You can pass all the laws you want. You can, you can put as many DHS workers on the ground as you can. It's still not going to stop child abuse. Kelsey's 6,000-page DHS file has never been released to the public. DHS can't, even if they reprimand anybody for the violations that we know were made, they don't make it public. So you never really know what was, you know, takes place. And we are understand that the supervisor on Kelsey's case has actually been promoted. A crime of secrecy, usually committed behind closed doors, investigated by an agency, protected by confidentiality. I question many times, you know, how many other children died in the state of Oklahoma in 2006 that n the public never heard about. And the, the bigger question is, why didn't they hear about it? Two laws, two children separated by a decade, yet their smiles frozen in time at two years old represent too many others. Between Ryan Luke's murder and Kelsey's Abuse or neglect killed 123 Oklahoma children. Since lawmakers passed Kelsey's law, 25 children have been buried.